Hello, my name is Ryan DeBlock, and I'm representing Team Zinc from the Naval Research Laboratory. Today I'll be speaking about safer, sustainable, and rechargeable batteries enabled by zinc sponge anodes. Why we care about zinc? If you look at this chart on the left, uh, we look at different materials that we can use for battery materials. Uh, you look at supply risk versus abundance. Uh, and this kind of gives us an idea of things that are high price and have high price volatility. So we want to be in this lower right-hand corner where we have things that are highly abundant in the Earth's crust and have a small supply chain risk. This is because uh, eventually you, know, you want to spread into things like electric vehicles and bring batteries into all different facets of life. So you need something that is going to be abundant and cheap. So we look at this lower right-hand quadrant and we see that zinc is a prime contender for this. Then when you compare your system cost versus how much energy you can store, or your specific energy, we compare to things like lithium ions, sodium ions, lead acid. We see that zinc-based batteries are not only significantly cheaper, but they can hold significantly more energy. So zinc is actually an older technology uh, that the NRL team is trying to bring back uh, some life into. Uh, the main characteristics of zinc that we care about are the high specific energy, the low cost. We use aqueous electrolytes, so this means that the batteries are non-flammable as compared to lithium ion batteries, which means that they're safe to operate and there's already a long successful history of use for naval applications. Historically, however, there's limited rechargeability and this is due to a complex reaction between zinc, zinc oxide, and an ion we call zincate. Uh, in essence, the electrochemical current density that we see at the surface of the zinc creates these uh, structures that grow out of the zinc and electrochemically short our batteries, which can lead to rechargeability problems and flammability issues, uh, as well as gassing of hydrogen and oxygen from the electrolyte. So what we've done is we've transformed traditionally primary batteries, which only discharge one time, into rechargeable batteries for zinc. Uh, we've done this through a redesign of the zinc electrode, which I can show you now. Typically zinc electrodes are zinc particles in some sort of gelled mass that's uh, pressed together. And what happens is when you have these isolated zinc particles, they see a very high current and they react in this way where they grow what we call dendrites, which I mentioned earlier. These are uh, zinc structures that will grow through the battery and completely destroy any sort of performance that you have. So what we've done instead is to uh, 3D wire all of our zinc together into a porous monolith. This helps spread the current density over a larger surface area and allows us to uh, run zinc batteries without fear of dendrites. And this is done actually in a quite easy way. Uh, our first generation used zinc powder and an oil and water emulsion. This helps give a lot of air into our uh, zinc powder slurry, which we pour into molds. Uh, we then demold and uh, heat treat, and then we get device-ready zinc sponge anodes. Recently, we've been working on uh, increasing the manufacturability uh, and bringing down costs even further. So we've developed uh, a method where we can uh, mold and heat treat our zinc sponges uh, into even larger shapes. So not only from a small lab-scale battery, we can also increase our uh, producibility up to things of tens of square centimeters. Uh, and this allows us to think about real devices that would be used in real life. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions if anybody has any. What kind of applications would the zinc sponge battery have? Sure. Um, we envision things not necessarily like cell phones, um, where lithium ion really has the high energy density you need for small scale power electronics. Uh, we're thinking things, uh, especially on ships, uh, where safety is really paramount. You can't have any fires or any risk of uh, any sort of uh, degradation of the batteries. Uh, we also think things like um, small scale power grids and grid scale energy, things where you really need to scale up to large batteries where the cost uh, and safety of lithium is really an issue. What sort of internal resistance would a zinc battery like this have as compared to say lithium ion? Sure, uh, we actually get really low internal resistances and the reason is if you look at this porous structure, uh, although it's relatively open, it's only 30% dense, 
all of these struts are made of pure metallic zinc. So uh, it's an interconnected metallic structure. So it has actually quite low resistance as compared, uh, compared to the anode for lithium ion batteries, which is made of graphite. Um, graphite has a decently high electronic conductivity, but it's typically pressed uh, in the Z direction. So you kind of lose all of the nice electronic conductivity throughout. Why should the Navy care about zinc batteries and how they're applied? Yeah, uh, as far as the, the Navy goes, there's a lot of applications where safety is really the most important thing. Um, and zinc batteries, because we use aqueous electrolytes and have redesigned our zinc anode, are completely safe and not flammable. Um, we also think about things like supply chain. Uh, we don't have to think about lithium or cobalt. Uh, and many times even nickel, which come from various places throughout the world. Zinc is super abundant and is found all throughout the U.S. and is continuously much, much cheaper than lithium or cobalt, which is found in Can you give a few examples of how they're used by the military? Sure. These are some of the areas where we either envision or are already starting to implement zinc batteries. Places like submarines, that's another place where safety is obviously the number one priority. Uh, you can't have any fires on the subs. So uh, here we're looking at things like uh, nickel zinc batteries, where we're looking at longer lifetimes, or silver zinc if we need really high power. Um, ship backup power, unmanned vehicles, um, and even delivery vehicles. Things that uh, are high priority, we want to make sure return safely uh, and can operate you know, in a wide temperature range. And how time intensive is the manufacturing? So typically to make uh, you know, something of this size uh, in our original recipe would take about a day. Um, you, know, you can make big batches at a time. Uh, we've been working on processes to cut that down to you know, even just one, uh, like a couple of hours. Do you have anything else that you think is important for the Navy to know or the general public about zinc batteries? Yeah, I think in general, zinc batteries kind of get a back seat compared to lithium ion batteries. So one thing that uh, our group is really trying to push is that in a lot of areas, zinc batteries can be uh, either a replacement or something uh, that can work in tandem with lithium ion batteries. Um, the redesign of the anode has really allowed us to uh, get energy densities that are comparable to lithium ion batteries. And uh, you know, we're working with a number of technology partners uh, using Kratos, and if people are interested in partnerships and things like that, we are always open to doing work with people.